Welcome to Reparations Wednesdays, Cooking and Lifestyle Hacks with Jackson. Uhuru, this is Jackson. I'm a proud member of the Uhuru Solidarity Movement. The Uhuru Solidarity Movement is the mass organization of white people working under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party, organizing in the white community to win other white people like ourselves to a stand in principled material solidarity with African self-determination, national liberation, and reparations. Our job is to win white people to raise resources that go towards the African-led economic development and political programs of the African People's Socialist Party as a concrete expression of our commitment to reparations to African people. USM is the mass organization of the African People's Solidarity Committee. The African People's Solidarity Committee is a constituent organization of the African People's Socialist Party. The African People's Socialist Party leads the overall Uhuru movement, of which USM is a part. Uhuru means freedom in Swahili. The Uhuru movement is organizing and uniting African people around the world as one people to liberate and unify Africa and African people everywhere under the leadership of the African working class. USM is a mass organization of primarily white people and others who stand in solidarity with the Uhuru movement. USM builds events, fundraisers, outreach activities, speaking tours, and national campaigns to raise resources as material solidarity with the Uhuru Movement's African community-led self-determination and economic development projects as a concrete expression of our unity with reparations. The USM Three Principles of Unity are that one, we work under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. Two, we recognize that African people have the right to lead their own struggle. And three, we work in the white community for reparations. I am making this YouTube series as my reparations challenge, one of many fundraisers held by members and supporters of USM to raise reparations to African people. And now, on with the show. Welcome to my kitchen. So these are my cast iron pans. Over here you see the Dutch oven. We have a big skillet here, and we have the small skillet here, which definitely, you can tell, needs some seasoning. It's had a lot of scrubbing and just needs to be uh, well taken care of here. Cast iron pans are really great because they retain heat and they uh, heat evenly which makes it you know, really useful in cooking where everything cooks at about the same temperature. They're also really great at retaining moisture if you have a lid on them. And so they're really great for baking, for roasting, for you know, stuff on the stove top, in the oven, boiling, you know, really anything. As I said in my last video, I use cast iron pans for pretty much everything I cook from quinoa and rice to you know, sweet potatoes and um, hash browns all sorts of things, stews and curries and all sorts of things, and I love them. Here I'm making some delicious veggie curry in my large cast iron skillet. So I'm going to be putting the rice in the tortilla. Uh, these are some uh, chimichangas I'm making. And here we have some quinoa that I put some black beans in. You can of course use cast iron pans in the oven to cook all sorts of things, whether savory or sweet. But what is cast iron? Cast iron differs from other iron in that it has 2% or more carbon, which makes it very brittle and not very good for bridges. However, it is perfect for cast iron pans, which have a long history. Older skillets are actually called spiders because they have legs on them because they would actually be put into the fire or into the coals and coals are often stacked on top of the lid in order to heat um, whatever is baking inside. Dutch ovens would come with a big handle in order to hang them over the fire. Cast iron pans were therefore a key tool in us white people committing horrible and sadistic genocide against the indigenous peoples, the men and women and non-binary people among us, and in thieving their land, feeding off of their resources, and wiping out entire groups and 
communities of indigenous peoples and also in committing heinous crimes against the environment and driving to extinction a number of species. With the rising up of African and other oppressed peoples demanding control over their own resources, land, and lives, the U.S. and other white countries are in a state of panic, in a crisis of imperialism, and that has led to everyday white people who have put our stake into the future of imperialism, panicking and resorting to all sorts of different ways to save resources and DIYs, and that has given rise to a rise in the sale of and use of cast iron pans as an old-timey you know, throwback to the quote pioneers to the colonizers and this is happening simultaneously of course as we are gentrifying out entire communities, black communities, Mexican communities and even calling ourselves pioneers and giving rise to fashion styles such as a prairie chic, quote-unquote. Meanwhile, African and other oppressed men, women, and children are being forced to mine all day long in unsafe mines, and that has led to you know, horrible, horrible deaths from mines collapsing on them, such as in Brazil recently, and the Anglo-American company, which also operates diamond mines, and we just had an entire tour on how all diamonds are blood diamonds, but all minerals are blood minerals. Iron is the second most sought after resource after oil. That is wealth stolen from African people and other colonized people, and it must be returned. The Uhuru movement is leading the African liberation movement, which will create a world in which African people have control over their own land, resources, and labor. And so we won't have situations where they are being forced to mine in unsafe mines. They will have control over their own destinies. And we in the white community have the responsibility to come under the African liberation movement and build the worldwide movement for white reparations to African people. So I always want to answer the questions that you have. And so viewers Amanda and Yui asked me how to make rice in cast iron pans and also how to clean them. And so I'll be addressing that. And if you have any questions, comment below and I'll get Here to them. I have some brown rice that I've put in this smaller lighter pan. And I'm going to rinse that so off. So here we're rinsing off the rice. And now with a wooden spatula, I've scraped the brown rice from the steel pan here into the Dutch oven. Now this rice, it's kind of in between, you know, a lot and a little. And so if it was a little bit less, I would cook it in this the uh, skillet here and just use the Dutch oven lid on top of that and do that. And it cooks really, really great. Um, but I have a little bit more than that, and so I feel it does justify the very large <laughs> Dutch oven here. And um, while I could just cook it in the steel pan, um, I find that it cooks much better in the cast iron. It has more moisture, it just cooks more evenly, it, it just, the texture is so much better. And um, so that's why I use these. I'm gonna get some water. And pouring on just enough so that it covers it. So this is pretty good here. It's about an inch over. I'm going to add a little bit extra water because I'm going to be putting in some veggies and things. I decided to add veggies to my rice. You don't have to. Um, I find that is a great way to get more veggies in. So that's what I do. But it's up so to I you. So I put in some frozen kale and uh, some frozen green beans. You can of course use you know any kinds of veggies you have. Uh, I think that boiling fresh carrots in it is really, really great. Um, I don't have that today, so I'm doing these. Um, of course, fresh is really great. I happen to have frozen, and um, it's going to be delicious. So I'm putting in some veggie paste um, for broth. 
and uh, you can use, of course, any other kind of veggie broth. I like using the paste. Um, I think it works really well for me, and it lasts a lot longer if you refrigerate it. So while I have it on high to start boiling, I'm adding in some of the spices. The veggie paste has enough salt, so I'm going to just put in some pepper. And we're going to put in some garlic and onion. You can, of course, use fresh, um, but I happen to have um, powdered, and I like a lot of it. So there we go. Cumin in there. I really like spices. Lots of chili powder. Now, of course, if you like yours not as spicy, you know, do what you want. <laughs> I'm adding in some chili powder and some extra cayenne. And we stir those in. And then we wait. And we put the lid on top. And uh, then you just wait for its magic. So remember after you bring your rice to a boil, turn it on low and then just let it sit there. If it's brown rice, of course, it's going to sit there about 45 minutes while white rice is not going to take as long. So while the rice is cooking, I am going to season this skillet here, my smaller skillet. And for seasoning, so what seasoning is, is the oil sticks to the pan when it's heated and it makes a coating that's non-stick and it also prevents the pan from rusting. So you know, normally cast iron is that silvery color, but with uh, the bonding of the oil to the metal, it becomes black. And, and it also has, you know, those very useful non-stick properties. So for seasoning, you want to use an oil that does very well with heat. And so canola oil is often used. For a healthier oil, you can use coconut. Um, but if you have coconut allergies or if you don't like the smell of coconut taking up your kitchen, you can also use grapeseed oil. But grapeseed oil is more expensive. And so a lot of people use one of the other two. Um, I happened to, uh, by chance, come across uh, some grapeseed oil that I've inherited and i um, going to be using that for the first time today. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I've used both canola and coconut and they work great. I'm sure grapeseed oil will work great too. So, we'll so see. before seasoning your pan, first you want to clean it. Now they say not to use uh, soap on your cast iron. Uh, I also read that it's okay to use a drop or two, so I use a drop or two, and it's been perfectly fine. So I no problems from using a little bit of soap. Of course, dish soap is made to take off oil and grease and things like that, and so that can hurt your seasoning, hence only using a drop or two of soap, and you know, it may be that you have to season it more often if you do use soap. Personally, I think it's it's worth it. So literally a drop or two. There we are. So when you're washing it, you wanna make sure that it's warm, not hot, or else cold water can crack it, and then your pan is useless. So make sure that it's warm, but not hot. Another reason to do it while it's warm is that if a pan is cold, all of the food and the stuff you're trying to get up off of it is not gonna come off so well. So you want to use it when it's warm. And if you forget and it gets cold, just you know put it on the stove and heat it up on low for a little bit and then you know clean it as you normally would. Also, and this is very important, never, 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 never put a hot pan on granite because the granite will crack and never put it on any kind of glass surface like an oven door because then the grass will crack will grass will crack and that is really unnecessary and inconvenient so you know, be be cautious with your pants. They also say to use like a special kind of brush. Um, I find that, that using the um, the rougher end of a sponge works just fine. No need to buy a $15 weird brush that you only use for your cast iron pans. So when scrubbing make sure to get the, um, the back of the skillet as well as the handle because you want to get the entire pan 
every time you clean it, but including before seasoning. Now I'm drying the pan with paper towel because if you use a cloth towel, it will not dry as well. Another option is to leave it on the burner and just heat it up until it dries. Um, I think that this is a little bit better for me, but you know, it's up to you which one you want to do. Um, I like to heat it up on the stove until all the water on it evaporates or just use paper towel. So I also use paper towels for seasoning and I'm putting some oil on the paper towel and um, I'm going to rub that all around the pan because if you just pour the oil in the pan, you risk putting too much oil and then that dripping into your oven and causing lots of smoke. And that is not fun. Then you just rub the oiled paper towel all around the pan, including the back of it and the handle. So you want to be very careful when handling it because you know it's going to be slightly slippery. So just give a good grip. You also want to put oil on your pans every time after you wash it. So after your pan is in the oven, you just set it to bake and put it in for about 350 or 400. Um, I usually do 400. Um, I think uh, 350 would take a little bit longer. And um, so 400 for about an hour is perfect. Now make sure that after you put the pan in the oven and set it to again 400 for an hour, that you put the fan on in your kitchen or you open a window or a door because otherwise things might get smoky and especially if you're using coconut oil everything will smell like coconut. Check on the rice, make sure to use a rag or a cloth in order to lift it because otherwise the handle will hurt your hand and that's not fun. So we're checking on it and it still needs a bit more time so we're going to just keep it on low for a while longer. If you don't have your pan seasoning for as long or hot enough, it will be sticky and not effective. The oil won't have um, bound itself to the metal as well, so you want to make sure to, you know, not take it out too early. It's best not to store your pans inside of each other in case they chip and by rubbing against each other. And then um, if you have a pan with a lid, you want to make sure to, um, um, a way to keep it from chipping is to put a paper towel or a very dry cloth um, in between them. But if you just oiled them, uh, make sure to leave the lid off of it um, or um, on it in a way that it's open a little bit so there is room for the oil to breathe because otherwise the oil will get rancid and you'll you take the lid off your pot and the pot will be smelling really gross so don't All do right, that. So we're going to check on it again and we can see that it's all, all set here. The rice has risen. Um, side note, when you take off the lid, make sure to hold it still over the pan so all the water drips back onto all the condensation, drips back onto the rice and not all over your stove. Um, so now that that's done, I'm going to add some nutritional yeast. So I'm going to add in some nutritional yeast here, get some B vitamins going. Uh, for non-vegans, you can, you know, obviously get them other ways or just still enjoy nutritional yeast. Um, I really like it. Now you'll see that there is still some water in here. Uh, that's fine because the rice will soak it up eventually. So that's good. So here we see I um, left it a little bit longer and it's soaked up the water, which means that now it won't be dry. It'll be just the right consistency. So I'm going to be putting the rice in my tortilla and wrap it all up and meal prep it for work. And I'm putting in some hot sauce for the rice and it's going to be... It's easy to forget to wash the lid when you're using cast iron, um, but make sure to wash the lid and season it just as you would a pan. And um, in case there is some resting, whether on the pan or the lid, and just use some steel wool and get it off that way. Don't normally use the, the steel wool for cleaning the pans because it will scrape off the seasoning. 
But if there's some rust on it, that's a good way to get it off. It looks much better now after having been seasoned with the grapeseed oil. And because it was so much down to the actual metal, it probably will need a couple more times seasoning before it's perfectly non-stick, but it looks much better as you can so see. I'm using this pan right after showing it to you. And um, it's actually pretty non-stick. There's like, it's a little bit sticky, but just a little bit, you know, not very hard at all because you don't want to scratch the, um, the uh, stuck on um, the, the seasoning anyway. You don't want to hurt that, but just like, you know, some light moving about, like, um, you make sure it's, it's, as you can see, it's pretty non-stick already after that one seasoning. So already progress. Uh, these are some uh, chimichangas I'm making. Um, with some leftover burritos I didn't get to at lunch, um, and I didn't <laughs> um, keep them together as well. Um, next time I'll use like some toothpicks or something, um, but hey, it all goes into the same place. And um, yeah, I just wanted to show that the, the pan is working pretty well after that one seasoning. Wooden utensils are really great to use on cast iron because they won't scratch your pan unlike metal utensils. So I just finished the chimichangas and we look at the pan here, it has like nothing stuck to it. Um, so I would say that is definitely a success, um, you know, nothing sticking. I did use some grapeseed oil in the pan itself to see how that would work with the chimichangas. And it's in case awesome. you're wondering, the chimichangas taste delicious. So after cooking the chimichangas, I found out that grapeseed oil is actually very inflammatory and should not be used to fry things. So um, not dead, but I uh, don't think I'll be using the grapeseed oil to you know cook anything like that again. Um, I do think that is very successful in seasoning. Um, and I also know that you can use other oils like flaxseed oil and other things. I think I'll stick with uh, coconut oil for now. In case you ever forget how to season your pans or cook your pans or what to do if they rust, um, a trick I was using for a while is I put the uh, directions on how to do all of that right on my fridge here. So when I needed that information, it was there. Because of this colonial capitalist system from which we as white people benefit, because of the thieving of resources, from African people, we in the white community have so much more access to food and that's really important for us to recognize. The same conditions exist for African people in the US as on the continent, where there are so-called food deserts, a lack of access to proper food with mostly just gas stations providing any kind of nutrition, if you can call it that, for the black community. This video is raising resources for the Black Power Blueprint, which includes Uhuru Foods and Pies, that is opening up a new headquarters in St. Louis, Missouri. Uhuru Foods and Pies is about the Black community having control over their own food, food production, and distribution. The next episode will be on sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes have a long history of being utilized by the African Liberation Movement. Though I will be showing how to use sweet potatoes in a number of ways, I will not be showing how to make sweet potato pie. I encourage everyone to get your sweet potato pies, the signature pies of Uhuru Foods and Pies by going to uhurupies.org. Every episode has a goal of $50 in reparations. Thank you so much to Tama Brooke, Yui, and Susie for donating last episode. Please subscribe to be notified of the next episode. What questions do you have? Leave a comment. Donate at uhurusolidarity.org See you next time! Thank you for watching Reparations Wednesdays Cooking and Lifestyle Hacks with Jackson.